John is uh, here for a little bit this morning. Started out at K Talk himself in 92. 92, 93, some, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I've been here since March of 95. Wow. So that's 14. I guess it'll be 15 years next March. Yeah. This coming March is a few months away. I got on the radio for a, for a, maybe a year, two years. That's all I want to do. Introduce my uh, specialty work I do with the human spine. And I, you know, once, well, obviously, once it gets in your blood, you can't leave it, can you? No, you can't. It's just one of those things where you want to, you know, bring your thoughts and energy and it, to the people in a compelling, entertaining way. And just, you know, you, you, if you like to talk about issues, if you grew up with it and you try it a little bit, then it's just hard to ever leave it. Do you got a legal background? I do. I went to law school at Berkeley. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why it says Esquire on your card here. Yes, sir. Okay. And what we're, everybody, what we're talking about is a new approach to conservative radio involving YouTube, right? Right, exactly. So I started out here in, in K Talk AM 630. My friend uh, Rick Marizani was, um, came in, he was operation director. He had someone that left, and I was uh, back actually in California. And at that time, I had I'd been a, um, well, a national champion in powerlifting. I actually went on to win you know, three more national championships, and I trained Mark McGuire and a bunch of other pro athletes. So I couldn't really come out here. It's like, hey, because he knew me from high school. It's like, I need someone for five weeks. I know you know politics and just call in. I was like, okay, I'll try it. So I was, you know, and it, it was a big hit. And people seemed to like it and whatnot like that. And then I did, you know, some different radio here, KCNR, before they became the Disney station with Rick and Todd and a bunch of those guys. And Mills was also over there as well. And then I did some radio in um, uh, San Francisco at KSFO and then around the Bay Area. And then I flipped over to TV and I got busy with law school and the practice and went from sort of, uh, you know, I practiced at Wilson, Sun City, Gilbert, and Rosario, so the biggest law firm for high technology and stuff in, um, pretty much in, in, in America, but definitely in, in, the, in, in Palo Alto. And I kind of like really missed it. I didn't have time to sort of do that sort of TV radio thing anymore. And it's just like, I really missed that whole scene, but I've been involved in politics all my life. And so then when YouTube started coming up, I said, you know, this is pretty cool. I can kind of do my own thing. I don't have a program director to tell me what to do. I don't have an executive producer to tell me what to do, a director to tell me where to stand. And at first it was kind of rough and whatnot, but we did more and more and more of it. And then between me and my brother, with all of our different channels, I'll talk about what we're doing right now, we have like 15 million views. I mean, it's pretty crazy. And what's great about YouTube is it's persistent, it's there forever, and it's worldwide. So anyone from Malaysia to Stockton to South Jordan can watch our stuff. But what I noticed with this intersection of you know politics and the media and the new media and where it was going, because I studied media in law school and also just from a business perspective, and I knew that this was really where everything was going to go, right? But I also saw what the people were doing on the left, whether it's Daily Coast, whether it's Huffington Post, whether it's um, all the YouTube liberal bloggers, you know, guys like the Young Turks and on and on and on. And they had total dominance of the message. So there was really almost no conservatives out there doing anything there. And also a lot of conservatives were kind of like old school, the bow tie, you know, the, uh, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tucker yeah. Carlson with all that type of stuff, the country club Republicans, and it just wasn't working anymore. So I was tired of seeing people on the left with all the rock stars in Hollywood and, you know, the Baywatch photos of, of President Obama and all that kind of stuff. And I said, you know what, we're going to do something different. We're going to bring conservatism into the cool age. We're going to do it on the new media and really challenge these people. And I started conservative new media. I was already doing this on my own videos, and so was my little brother Paul. But I said, we're going to start conservative new media. We did it four months ago. Within four months' time, we have 3,100 subscribers, I think 2.3, 2.4 million views. We have been used by Fox News, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, on and on and on and on. I mean, like, I think now it's like 55, you know, big major media outlets worldwide. And we're exploding. The astroturfers have tried to come after us. Uh, Axelrod, you know, the Daily Coast, all, all these people have tried to come after us. And they can't stop us. They can't shut us. They'll try every single trick in the book. Now, what do you mean come after you? Although, okay, so basically... The whole term astroturfing means fake grassroots. Yeah. Started by David Oxelrod. He, I don't know if it's actually started by him, but he's an expert in it. And his uh, uh, firm, AKS or something like that, consulting, they got millions and hundreds of millions of dollars from the whole campaign and whatnot like that. Their whole goal is to basically have like 5, 10, 20 paid people and volunteers to make it seem like you know that, that core group of 20 is 100,000, basically. And so they'll do 
anything. I'm not. I'm not going to accuse anyone of anything here. But let's just say that, <laughs> you know, I've got an email saying, "Hey, we know where you live. Hey, we've got your medical records. Uh, you know, trying to, to uh, flag our videos, pull down our videos, trying to claim copyright when there's you know no copyright infringement. It's all our own stuff. And they've tried every single thing in the book. I've heard all kinds of stuff. Trying to get people fired. I've gotten calls from my old law firm from people saying we saw this and that. And I called them up and like you know, I mean they'll, they'll do anything and this is part of their tactics I mean there's been reports of like people going on radio stations in Chicago and the astroturfer is just shutting down the phone line so no one can you know they don't want things to get out well look what they did to Sarah Palin for instance mm -hmm. getting in her email I mean there's I, we can go step by step that this always seems to happen on the Republican side but it never really happens on the Democrat side you know and so I mean they have people like Charlie Rangel I mean who's obviously Right. I mean, look. Well, they're after him now. Well, now finally, yeah. you know. But I mean, it, there's there's sort of a history of this stuff. So, and then so basically, the astroturfers and Acorn. That those these tactics are all linked. Oh yeah. Right. The community organizing, the the uh, a thuggery, the paying people to try to get out there and, and fake register people. I mean, this it, it's it's by any means necessary kind of approach. And the, the right wing, the conservatives, you know, good, hardworking, decent people like here in Utah and South Jordan and Salt Lake City, they weren't used to this kind of tactic. And they had no response for it. And so a lot of times, with, on the, what, what we got upset about in the Republican side or the conservative side is it's just a cut and run mentality. Uh, the first sign of trouble, hey, well, you're, you're gone. We'll cut you loose, whatever like that. McCain didn't even challenge these people hard. They didn't, he didn't even want to say, uh, you know, Obama's middle name, which is, I mean, whatever. I mean, you can say that's important, not important, whatever. But he wouldn't challenge them on so many of the important issues, whether it's Reverend Wright, whether it's, the, you know, all, all votes on the war. I mean, all kinds of stuff like that that were really critical. And now we're seeing, since Obama's been in there, that his... This whole cadre of people surrounding him are really scary, frankly, and extreme. Whether it's Van Jones, Sustine, I mean, you can go on down well, the Just list. the Emanuel brothers. Look at that and what they're trying to do with healthcare. People, I mean, I fight all the time because I have like about 150 of the top media people on uh, my Facebook page and whatever, and I'll go back and forth and I keep hammering Jake Tapper from ABC about like, hey, death panels, which what Senator Palin said, is, is allowable in terms of a political sort of shorthand and discourse. No, it's not actually in the bill, but there will be rationing and someone will decide that and that can affect people's health care and lives and if you can look over in the UK. So we'll go back and forth with all this type of stuff. But basically conservative media is a way to challenge in your face the left wing side to combat all the stuff from uh, uh, you know Daily Coast to Axelrod to Astro Trevor's to all this and give conservatism a fun, hip, new young voice but everybody seems to really really love it you know it, it's it's interesting that we'll do everything from interviews to issue ads to you know talk show type of stuff and anything in, in between so I mean people can check us out on YouTube they can check us out on the web what would they look for on YouTube you go to conservative new media or look up my name John J O H N D Villarreal V I L L A R R E A L and it's just I mean it's it's exploding and, and we have like tons of Congress people that are friends and uh, it would, it, it's fun, and I, you know, I, I love it. I, I, you know, it's it's great to come back to K Talk, where it all sort of started, and I just love the people here in Utah and and the radio, and there's always something to talk about. Uh, we have a, a break coming up here, about three minutes. After that, I, I want to go to YouTube and play a sample. That'd be great. Absolutely. It, it's childproof, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's okay. all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. You know, there are children listening this morning. There's a lot of homeschoolers out there that have their kids listen to this program in the morning. So tell us, because we're, we're cross-promoting this right now. We're filming, actually, for a YouTube. So, I mean, tell me about your show and what's going on in Utah right now and what's interesting to you. Well, my show is, is kind of more world news. Gotcha. All right? So I, uh, I get up, the, the show 7 to 9, I get up from, uh, oh, anywhere from 4 to 4.30, yeah. spend a couple hours reading international newspapers. So I'll read the Independent, I'll read the Times, I'll read the English translations of Pravda, uh, Le Monde, De Velt, uh, a couple of Italian newspapers, because the local newspapers seem to get lost in what is really going on. Correct. So I try to orient my show and my program as to what I see on the horizon that is eventually going to affect us a few weeks to a few months down the road, such as the last two months I have been warning everybody of the 15th of October, 
because by federal statute, the Government Accounting Office at the end of last month here, a week or so, or a couple weeks ago, by the 15th of October, they have to start printing the year-end fiscal reports for the federal government. Right. And a lot of stuff is going to be coming out that hasn't been discussed yet. Plus, by the end of this month, by the 31st, you're going to start having the uh, third quarter reports of some of the major corporations that have been inflating their figures, but the real number is going to be coming out. Oh, yeah. So the proverbial stuff is going to hit the fan here in the next week or two. Uh, and I, So I talk about stuff like that. I talk about what's happening with the dollar. Oh, yeah. and, and this consortium that is now coming together that wants a collection of international currencies. Yes. Besides the, the SDRs, they want a, a consortium of currencies to be the world's reserve currency, not one in particular, but the dollar is not listed in that consortium. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about that. And, 